Think back to the 2016 election and think about the things that President Trump, then candidate Trump, was most talented at. Trump, much like a veteran 4chan troll, was excellent at triggering the media and trolling them into talking about him. There's no airtime like free airtime, and despite being underfunded compared to big-name candidates and establishment favorites like Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio, Trump was able to routinely dominate media coverage by triggering the media into going overboard and overplaying their hand, making him look better and more reasonable as a result. And although he hasn't been perfect as president, that feel when still no border wall, Trump certainly hasn't lost his touch for big baiting the media into attacking him and going overboard on things that most people will find totally uncontroversial. We all got to witness a first-hand example of this when the media went into a firestorm a few days ago, when President Trump tweeted about the plight of farmers in South Africa. Let's begin with Trump's tweet, which should be wholly uncontroversial, and then we'll look at how the system-approved blue-check Twitter mob responded, downplaying and mocking President Trump and condemning him for showing any concern about the plight of the farmers. Many of them even went so far as to accuse President Trump of being a white supremacist, all because he doesn't want white farmers to be brutally murdered in their homes. Before that, however, we will get into what's actually happening in South Africa. We'll look at the words from the South African president himself. So you can make up your own mind. Who's more in the right here? President Trump or the system-approved media figures mocking and attacking Trump for trying to defend a truly endangered minority? So we'll begin, obviously, at the start. Trump's tweet, quote, I have asked Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to closely study the South African land and farm seizures and expropriations and the large-scale killing of farmers. Quote, South African government is now seizing land from white farmers. Tucker Carlson and Fox News. The tweet is referencing international news that broke early in August. The South African government did indeed announce they would be expediting the process of confiscating white land without compensation. From Al Jazeera.com, by no means a right-wing source, quote, South Africa moving to expropriate white farmers' land. South Africa's president says the ruling ANC will push ahead with plans for the expropriation of land from white farmers without compensation, end quote. Or, these quotes from the chairman of South Africa's ruling African National Congress party, as reported by The Express. According to Mr. Montache, quote, you shouldn't own more than 12,000 hectares of land. Therefore, if you own more, it should be taken without compensation, end quote. He continued, quote, they will not allow you to take it. People who are privileged never give away privilege as a matter of gift. And that is why we say, to give you the tools, revisit the Constitution so you have a legal tool to do it. End quote. Or from the Daily Mail, on Tuesday night, President Cyril Ramaphosa said his ruling African National Congress party will push ahead with the amendment to allow for the expropriation of white land without compensation. More than two decades after the end of apartheid, whites still own most of South Africa's land, and ownership remains a highly emotive subject. End quote. And finally, directly from allafrica.com, a quote from President Ramaphosa himself. Quote, It has become patently clear that our people want the Constitution to be more explicit about expropriation of land without compensation. Ramaphosa said in a televised address, the ANC will, through the parliamentary process, finalize a proposed amendment to the Constitution that outlines more clearly the conditions under which expropriation of land without compensation can be effected. End quote. The ANC is the ruling party presently in South Africa. They are attempting to stave off a threat from their left, specifically from Julius Malema's far-left Economic Freedom Fighters Party, who has made land theft without compensation a major plank of his party's platform. As far as the farm murders, those have been well documented. For example, the murder of Joanne Engelbrecht's 78-year-old father and 74-year-old mother. He arrived to their house to find their bodies mangled, bloodied, and tortured in their farmhouse. In the past decade, anywhere between 20 and 30 of his neighbors have been killed in some way. As he said in this interview with the Australian News, not only do they kill you, but the way they kill you. They torture you. This is hate. This is political hate. End quote. While there may be a deeper, more biological reason for this hatred, I certainly agree with him. These aren't just robberies gone wrong, like the media likes to say. These are vicious, brutal murders occurring against the white South African farm population. Lauren Southern recently made a documentary called Farmlands that details what is happening in South Africa, and I highly recommend that all of you go out and watch that. We'll come back to this topic later. The details of most of these farm murders are too graphic and brutal for me to relay to you here in this video. You'll have to look these up for yourself to truly grasp what's going on here. And again, I recommend watching Lauren's documentary. But let's now take a look at the media response to Trump's tweet. Just to refresh, he instructed the Secretary of State to look into land expropriation and the murder of white South Africans. How do you think the media would have reacted if he had tweeted this about the supposed Rohingya crisis going on in Southeast Asia, or discrimination against Muslims in the Southern Philippines? Do you think the media would have freaked out about that? Probably not. 
I think it has something to do with the biology of these South African farmers that caused the media to go into such a meltdown. Anyways, so how did the media respond to this? By attacking Trump, of course. It's satanic when leadership make uninformed statements suh as this one. I'm pretty sure the US has its own issues that need to be dealt with and researched by Sec Pompeo. Well, considering Mike Pompeo is the Secretary of State, foreign affairs are literally his job. Quote, White people until Mandela was released were treating blacks like slaves in their own country. It's payback time, buddy. Don't even venture there. Stay out of it. It's black land. They are free to cultivate it the way they wish. This is not occupied Palestine, end quote. Of course, as the commenter below notes, most of South Africa was indeed uninhabited, and the Bantu tribes didn't begin migrating to the area until British and Dutch settlers built a society worth living in. Additionally, don't you find it odd that instead of denying the genocide taking place, our Twitter lefty friend here admits to it, and in fact justifies it. The brutal murders of elderly white farmers, it's payback time, buddy. Sure, your ancestors did nothing wrong. They stole land from no one. They homesteaded the land and indeed built the irrigation systems necessary for it to be arable in the first place. But you deserve to have your eyes gouged out with a power drill because uh, you're white. Now, of course, we could look at the reactions of low-level Twitter resistors all day, and we wouldn't learn anything. We'd just get angry and fed up and even more convinced that democracy is indeed a bad idea. However, I did find it interesting that of the people who actually lived in South Africa, or as they would say, South Africa, the vast majority were supporting Trump. In fact, I couldn't find one white South African in this whole thread that disagreed with Trump's account of events. But let's look at the big dogs, the blue checks. They're smart, they're hip, they're cool, and they have the right opinions. They live in the best cities. They have the most rewarding jobs, writing articles about weird third world drugs and how dumb you middle Americans are in between trips to the clinic for Jardia treatment. The SPLC, a far-left radical fringe organization, dismissed Trump's tweet as a startling example of the president indulging in, quote, racist thinking. Their laughable article goes on to describe black South Africans as having a, quote, almost superhuman capacity to forgive. The SPLC article then cites examples of ANC party members saying that white people should be, and I quote, hacked and killed like Jews, skinned, and your offspring used as garden fertilizer, end quote. But of course, to the SPLC, <laughs> this is no big deal. No, no, no. See, officials in the ruling party describing using white children as garden fertilizer and skinning white farmers alive is just no big deal. That's, that's free speech, and that's their right. Of course, if you're a white person living in America and you decide to condemn this sort of thing, say this is wrong, the SPLC will label you a white, horrible, evil, racist, supremacist, terrible, bigot person. So that's one take. How about this one from cool guy with hip opinions, Youssef Manayer? He tweets, quote, you know who believed the nonsense about a white genocide in South Africa? Anders Breivik, the lunatic white supremacist terrorist that killed 77 people in Norway in 2011. Trump furthered the conspiratorial nonsense to millions of people. End quote. You know who drank water? Ted Bundy. You know who also has probably drank water? Youssef Manair. From the Washington Post, quote, Trump's backing of a white nationalist conspiracy theory on South Africa prompts fierce backlash there and fresh criticism in the U.S., I feel bad for everyone that went to journalism school and thought they'd be doing important, meaningful work when they got out and ended up becoming fake news merchants and purveyors of garbage like this. The president of South Africa has explicitly stated, he said this in Nash on national TV, that they are moving ahead with land expropriation and violence against South African farmers is incredibly well documented. This is how the lying media conducts their business. They just use labels and scare words willy-nilly in order to stigmatize whatever it is they're talking about. They're trying to bend reality to fit their own narrative. State-sanctioned theft and violence against white farmers in South Africa is no conspiracy theory. It is well-documented fact. But the media believes that if they call it a conspiracy theory, that makes it true. Quote, Wow, just wow. Here we see the president of the U.S. openly endorsing the white genocide propaganda of the South African white supremacist movement. End quote. Well, when white people in South Africa are being attacked in their homes, the government is pursuing land expropriation and asset forfeiture, and the leader of a major political party is singing Kill the Boar, a reference to murdering white South Africans, I'm pretty sure that's the run-up to a genocide, pal. Julie Davis, another blue check with cool opinions, states the following. Anti-defamation leak issue statement calling Trump's tweet about the killing of white South African farmers extremely disturbing, saying it echoes a long-standing and false white supremacist claim. Uh, I wonder why the Anti-Defamation League would be extremely disturbed by the fact that Trump doesn't want white farmers murdered. Don't look too far into that, though. Don't look up what the ADL is and don't look at their political biases. Here's the bottom line. Trump was telling the truth about South Africa. The numbers, facts, and quotes all line up. White farmers are being targeted for violence, and white farmers are also being targeted for land expropriation. 
These are both observable facts. So when the media attacks Trump over this, calling him a supremacist because he doesn't want white farmers being killed, that's going to backfire on them. Most decent people will see Trump's tweet and see the evidence of what's going on, and they'll find absolutely nothing wrong with Trump standing up for these people. And then they'll see the media's response, calling Trump a white supremacist, white nationalist, conspiratorial bigot. The end result is those labels, those scare words, lose their power and meaning. We all know the story of the boy that cried wolf. He pretended to see a wolf so many times in order to draw attention to himself that when the actual wolf came, no one believed him. What we're seeing right now is similar. It's the Twitter blue check that called white supremacist. They're repeatedly accusing the president, who, again, enjoys the approval of a plurality of American voters, of being some sort of racial supremacist, all because he's talking about international issues that are well-researched and well-documented. Many on the left are being revealed in the process to be very vindictive and hateful, those that justify the violence and brutality against South African farmers specifically. And the system-approved media agenda setters are being exposed as well. Their inability to make arguments is being put on full display as President Trump triggers them yet again, using reality to reduce them to accusation-hurling, name-calling, agenda-driven, fear-mongering leftist purveyors of fake news.